Hi folks, I've been procrastinating here for some time. Uh, still on acrylics. I know there are quite a few people that like acrylics. It's not my favourite, but uh, I'm enjoying this spell <coughs> with them, including some abstracts. <coughs> you can paint what you like with acrylics. You can almost paint on what you like with acrylics. This is just a plain sheet of uh, studio paper, watercolour paper, £140. And you can paint straight under with acrylic, not with oil really, although I have done in the past, but it might have been led you astray. But this, if you're going to use this, this for oil painting, it's a great surface, then you need to prime it a couple of coats of PVA glue, which is the cheapest way to do it, or with some gesso mixed in with a colour, or a colour mixed in with some gesso. Doesn't matter, you're going to obliterate it anyway. But the paint, the paint or the, the, the water in this will go into the uh, surface, but that, that's fine because once it's dry, it's uh, waterproof. That's the great thing about cloud acrylics. So uh, I've got my paint here. This is, I'm going to change this. We've got to cadmium red, ultramarine, Payne's grey, and cadmium yellow. I'll, just, I'll squeeze out some. I don't want any more than that. So I want to paint grey. I might use paint grey to make it a fourth colour, but uh, uh, I'm looking for my yellow. I've got this big tube of yellow. It's a bit uh, jellyfied, but uh, it's okay. I want to uh, do this three colour, this three primary colours with you because you you can. You, I I'm really tempted to go into my paint grey or even black. I just make some marks on this paper, but I'm not sure all the um, acrylic abstracts <clears throat> are suitable for small sheets. This is a 15 by 11 inch sheet of paper, but black against white is a great contrast. Obviously, it's the greatest of all contrasts. But you can add some red to it and just make something that is nonsensical to anybody watching. And they will make a judgment if they can be bothered to look at it. That goes, well, I don't like that, it's not for me. Okay, fine, not for you. Somebody will come along, as it's happened to me on several occasions. Wow, that's fantastic. And they've sold. Quite incredible what people uh, will buy. You do not need to have anything in your mind to make abstracts. But oh, you can do, of course, you can design an abstract. Uh, but it's up to you. The, the acrylic is an ideal medium for for this. I mean, even the great uh, Jackson Pollock in the 40s uh, used um, household enamels, household emulsions, whatever, enamels. And uh, I know uh, he set the, the painting world alight with his uh, wonderful drip paintings, but uh, his, his uh, paints now are falling off the canvases and the I think our National Gallery and the Tate Modern have had problems stabilising these wonderful strip paints. I, I just love them but my favourite uh, artist, uh, abstract artist is Howard Hodgkin, Sir Howard Hodgkin who died a couple of years ago. He signed a couple of books for me uh, when he was in one of my son's restaurants that he worked in at the time uh, which is very good of him, so they're worth a lot more than I paid for the books. Uh, right, okay, so, but I'm going to do a more traditional one, but I still want to use my my slabby brushes, if I can find them. Uh, these are very, very good. <coughs> you don't? <coughs> I got one here, it's a lovely brush for varnishing, but it's a lousy brush, for, but it's too, it's too flimsy. These shorter brushes are, are, are much better. So here we are, I've got a big brush for the sky, maybe a bit of landscape. This will be semi-abstract, but it's just to, to get, get you using or trying different methods. You, you can change your method anytime you like. You see, you see, you see some a painting, as I do, I think oh, I'd like to paint like that, and then you have a go at it. But you don't copy it, you, you do your own thing with it. So okay, let's get let's get that big brush. Uh, just water. Don't need my lovely vet gel. 
a bit of water, a uh, brush, let's wear the brush, got some clean water here, a bit of white, I've got a new tube, a new tub of, of that uh, cut on its way. Don't worry about uh, the paper showing through because we're going to change it. I'll just get some paint on, as I did with a couple of did yesterday. Well, I did one, didn't I? Put it on a watercolour. I could do a fill, I want to do some trees, but not quite as uh, abstract as I did yesterday, so we're on horizon. I love skies, so that's probably why I do so many of them, making them a feature of the. Uh, oh, all that'll do. Let's uh, put that in the drink and we'll get some foreground. Oh, excuse me. Some foreground in. I'll be right here. So, a bit of yellow. Just three primaries yellow, red, a bit of red. And. Just melt this. Uh, it's lovely paint, but it's uh, it's past its best, if you know what I mean. And once this dries and it dries very quickly, you can paint over it. And it's good uh, using just three colours, plus white of course, because it helps you learn the mixes that you can get with the three primaries, whatever primaries you want to use, that's your personal choice. Get some of that on there. I should clean the palette really, because there's a lot of Payne's Grey floating around on the palette. Look, see that's mostly yellow, it's a, it's a cadmium yellow. And remember that cadmium yellows are not poisonous, they are hues, they are synthetics, although you can, can buy pigment for a bit expensive, you can grind it yourself, you can add to your own oil mix, there we are, so going up here a bit there. Okay, let's put a faint bit of blue over the background, over here just to give us a bit of a Norfolk-y type landscape or a bit of red. Now that's got a lot of just a, a cool blue. A little bit light. Um, Just mixing up a bit lighter than, than that. Okay, we can count to change some nice dark trees on there. All right, let's get our. I'm not going to use that lovely little brush. You can buy these um, in art shops, but you can buy packs of them. Contain them to the large ones. Now, in, in a, 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 what was you call it, a, a oh God, I can't remember my, my brain, hardware shop, shop store like the range or Wilco's, just look out for the, for the uh, but you don't want the long hairs, this one is shorter than that one. I use the, these when I'm doing, or uh, well, this one, when I'm doing a two-tone or three-tone study with, with, with oil and, and lifting out from a white surface, this makes a lovely blending brush. Right, so let's just brighten up some of that uh, light there on that horizon. And oh, that's lovely. That'll give us a nice counter change. They're glazing over. A 
Okay, now while that's uh, going off, that's still no, that's dry. Well, almost. Give that another couple of minutes. I'm going to get another brush. I'll use one of my one of these lovely bristle Taylor Brownie graduate range, gorgeous brush. I've got a lot of them here. Sadly, the range has gone from Croydon. Well, it hasn't gone, but the they they had a. I think they they leased off a, cor a corner of the huge store um, to Iceland, which is a, a, a I've got all my brushes. Is it a freezer store and? Uh, they had this lovely art department, but, but then it, it uh, disappeared. Iceland got rid of it. I find my palette is a bit too grey because I've got that. Uh, go over there. A bit better. Soft. Okay. Look, I've got the blue mixed with Payne's grey for, for that sort of semi abstract that I did yesterday. Um, and I, I can't find my. can't find anything today. I've done the main shop. But I can't find my, my quality palette knife. It's in the mess here. Might have even fallen into the uh, plastic bag and I've thrown it away. Uh, right, anyway, let's, let's just scrape some of this off, get rid of it. But I've been to Lidl's this morning, we, we're sort of alternating with Lidl and Hazda. Uh, apart from the six bottles of Australian Cabernet Sauvignon, which they've bought in bulk, and when it's uh, gone, it's gone, for £2.99 a bottle, still going, so there we are. Little. Um, they're, they're, they're knocking out these rolls, these huge rolls of paper, good paper, good quality kitchen paper, whatever you want to use it for. Ideal for my little studio here. And, uh, and I'll give it my, we've got one in the kitchen now, well, the, the remains of the one I was using, which was most of it. Look, it's all serrated. Lovely, lovely stuff. Last for ages. For three pounds for one one roll, so we've stuck up on it. Okay, so let's get back into this. Oh, uh, no, I'll do. I'm going to do some more of the sky. Uh, where are we? Sky blush. Don't want that one. Let's get the big one out and give it a shake because we're going to thicken up a bit now. Just, just cover up, make it more opaque. Well, it's very, it's very quick. Well, I'm very quick, put it that way. Uh, get some. So a little touch of yellow, touch of red, and a lump of white. Touch of, touch of. That, go there, put it white. There's a bit more red in there. Now I'm running out of white, so I might be able to get some out of that to tin, go pot. Tub. Put the one the white in there. Go over the uh, background. Let some of that blue shine through. Go 
for some bottle of effects, see if I can get squeeze some more out of my pipe. That's the way to buy a 500ml tub of it, it's 15 quid. It's going up all the time, we've got inflation in this country at the moment. I don't suppose we'll be the only country. After paying a lot of millions of people to go on furlough, and a lot of them don't want to go back, take the money. So it's just that sort of mottled effect. Seems to be quite popular. If you've got any questions about acrylic, you can always go on my YouTube channel and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Just, just get notifications when I post new videos. Now remember, I'm only using three colours. I can't see me mixing, I just can't set it up. Oh, I've got some pure white on it now. Just lighten it a bit. I should get the other tub of acrylic um, on Monday. Right, okay, let's get a bit of background in there. Keep your brushes in the water while you're if you, when you change it because if you don't, you'll forget it and it'll go dry and you'll you'll ruin your brush. Uh, uh, that needs to come down a bit more. It's a bit too. I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to put my uh, I'm just wondering about about this colour here. I'm going to put some more green in that. I don't know my camera I, mean, I, I put all the photos of these on my Facebook page. My camera is, tends to overdo the red a bit. Well, that's right. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to change that. I'm going to use this brush and just put a bit more green in there now. Now we've got the sky done. Uh, a bit of blue, a bit of red, a bit of yellow. field and just missing with some other colours on the palette like there too close to my red my yellow I might even put a pond in there nice 
screen there. Put a white on there. Here you could quickly go over. Okay, put that in the drink. We get the uh, get the tree the tree shaped brush. Uh, right, so we want uh, dark colours here. Let's just go here for one. Change, vary the greens, look. Right, so you can get quite a good dark green with, with those colours, look. You see that? Summer trees. Just a bit of blue background poking through. Just the size of the brush. Don't want to go uphill. Gone downhill. It's all that cheap wine I drink. Oh look, just those three primaries. Look, almost black. This is just a, an exercise in, in painting middle distance trees. I can put in some yellow over that, when that dries a bit. There's a dark shadow in. Are we going uphill there? Yeah. Change that. Yeah, it's a very delicate touch. Okay, so that's uh, we can make it with one of them a bit larger than that, a bit too regimented. Let's, let's uh, bring, uh, bring this one up a bit. I'm going to try to leave some air holes for birds to fly through. So I'll put that in the drink. Uh, right now, let's uh, get a soft brush here. I've got having this Paris this Pro Art series, twenty two hog varnish. I'm going to lighten that horizon. So before I do that, I'll rip my rubbish uh, cheapo. Mm. 
knives. Oh. I've got a table behind me. Let's have a quick look. Not there, not there, not there. Um, I tell you what, just by way of interest, I bought a pack of five of these, uh, they're about eight pounds in total, including post and package, which is very, very good. And I put a lump of uh, toweling in there, and I can put my. I'm going to change this to. Oh, that probably won't. Right. Uh, got to be careful that the floppiness of this uh, Ziploc uh, bag doesn't dip into the. Uh, into the paint. So what I've, what I've got, I've, the palette itself is getting a bit sort of battered. So I'll use it, look it's twisted. It's a master's and slave palette, but it goes all over the place. But it goes on the box okay, but it's starting to split in one of the corners, but that's okay. Because that will, because it's got spikes in the back of it, it will keep the uh, the surface or the top of the bag from dipping in the paint. That's going to be a good thing. I always keep my my watercolours in one. Uh, they stay, stay moist, provided you've got it on a wet membrane of toweling or sponge or whatever. It's, it's, it's great. It's worth it's worth uh, lashing out on uh, some zip ziplock bags. The, the ones the ones I'm using are. Uh, um, A3, A3, uh, lovely, so now yeah, let's get some, uh, that wasn't a brush was it, same brush uh, but they're, they're different for some reason, so I'm going to, a bit of water, go into the yellow, go into the white, and Just so the council change against the uh, against the trees. Sometimes I do put my darks in first in the foreground, um, and by the time you get round to it, they've dried, and you can just put your counter change. It's very important this counter change. Light against dark. Okay, that was brightening it up now. Let's have a of the old red in there. Oh, just texturing. And because it's lighter than the background, it will give an impression of shadows in the short grasses. Oh. It's all brightening up now. You could put a windmill in or a church spire or whatever you like. Let's just get, the, let's get some light green. Huh. Now it's Saturday tomorrow. I've got to do some one, at least one for for my patrons who pay to watch. But I, I, I try to post two two a week on Patreon. So there's over 500 videos there that you haven't seen. I only the my minimum fee is about. Four dollars a month or four pounds a month is it's a lot cheaper than uh, buying a DVD or whatever.
I, I, I do enjoy this sort of painting. I know it's very simple, but it's taken me a long, oh, many years to be able to, to, to get that effect. You can do it much quicker, no doubt. All right, well, let's add a bit of cleaner brush, just add a bit of, bit of darker green. Take the brush and give it a whack in, in a clean bit of toweling. My wife just sorted out loads of toweling. So I use a lot of it. Once it starts to go a little bit stiff tatty, just sling it and cut another piece. Okay. Uh, so a bit of dark green, so let's go back to that. So. Just adds a little bit of je ne sais quoi. It's uh, it's just texturing. Texturing is, is very very important. Creating an illusion of of detail. The viewer completes the dots. Okay, well I'm going to let that go. I don't think I want to do any more to that. Uh, it's a demonstration. And uh, rest assured, I, I don't do anything for myself since I started this channel about uh, nearly nine years ago, in 2013. Uh, I don't know, it's going down downhill, but it doesn't matter because we could just put it, if you want it leveled, just, just move the mount around it. Now, this is all lovely and dry. Look. So I'm starting to to like uh, acrylics more and more. So let's put, put them out on. Okay, let's just straighten it up. Look at that. There we are. A very, oh, let's uh, move you up. Okay, there we are. So just a simple, uh, we can, oh, I'll tell you what we can do. Um, I won't use my good brush, I'll use, I've got a lovely brush, the, the rigger, the Frank Clark, you all know Frank Clark, he does a bit of acrylic painting as well. We can put some figures in there, and if it goes wrong, we can uh, knock it out. So, wear their white shirts. Of course, we've got all that lovely, uh, lovely dark colour. Let's uh, put a bit of a uh, bit of red. Uh, hardly show, but we can put a few poppies in there. That all adds. Oh, just, just, just that, and get some bit of white, and just, just top some about. All adds to the uh, the effect of it. That's a very simple painting, but I think it's this type of painting packs a packs a real punch. Okay, that'll do, I'll clear up now. Uh, right, well I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration, folks. Very easy to, to put uh, a church or something in their windmill. But I, I just enjoy the meadow. So, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for looking in. Goodbye.